Uh, the human nature is fascinating because you never know who you have in front of you. This is the worst case I've ever seen. I just can't believe it. Ildo Beach has been used to discard human remains for some time. What are you going to do to me? We could have a serial killer. Yeah, there's somebody after me. I'm sorry? There's somebody after me. Yeah. It's shocking. We found human remains, three human remains so far in the area between Oak Beach and Gilgo Beach. You never saw anybody coming in and out of that house? No. This is 60-year-old Rex Heuerman. Rex Heuerman, I'm an architect, I'm an architectural consultant, I'm a troubleshooter, born and raised on Long Island. Okay. Been right. working in Manhattan since 1987. Although he's famous in America, it's not due to his architectural achievements. Instead, he was widely recognized for his serial killings. Surprisingly enough, most of his victims were escort women. The human nature is fascinating because you never know who you have in front of you. It's very uh, unsettling at the same time, but also fascinating. However, Rex appeared to be an upstanding member of society. I do troubleshooting, architectural troubleshooting, and negotiations with the building department. Okay. What I mean by that is, do we do the standard stuff with the building department? Um, handle your filings. Um, I have other clients who are a lot of other architects. Mm -hmm. And we'll handle their interactions with the building department, yeah. especially out of city architects because they're a little afraid of the city. And Stop when city. <laughs> when a job that should have been routine yeah. suddenly becomes not routine. Yeah. Thus, he danced in the shadows, a silhouette of freedom, his connection severed from the grip of the law's reach. As soon as we told him and informed him he's going to be placed under arrest, we put him inside the vehicle, we read him his Miranda, uh, he uh, asked for a lawyer, and that was the end of the conversation. It started over a decade ago. The relaxed shores of Gilgo Beach on Long Island, New York, became synonymous with horror and mystery after the discovery of multiple victims' bodies. What initially seemed like a routine investigation soon unfolded into one of the most perplexing and spine-chilling serial killer cases in recent memory. Uh, for the murders of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. Uh, the, the investigation of Maureen Brainerd Barnes is ongoing. Uh, these young women went missing between July of 2007 and September of 2010. They were found in De uh, December of 2010 by the Suffolk County Police Department, and then there was nothing, absolutely nothing. For, their, for the next 13 years, their cases went unsolved. However, in a dramatic turn of events, the case saw a breakthrough with the arrest of Rex Hireman. It's a shocker. I mean, it's a real eye-opener. And like I said, 29 years. This is the worst case I've ever seen. You never saw anybody coming in and out of that house? No. Never. You would say, who lives here? Never see anybody. The fact that it's in the exact town is uh, kind of alarming. It's just really unsettling knowing that something like this literally hits so close to home. It was kind of amazing. It was sort of a carnival-like atmosphere. Yeah, people were standing around, taking pictures, taking selfies. It just makes no sense to me how someone could, like, this close to me. It was a huge media spectacle. All the network came, all the cable networks came. I live in Manhattan now. I had to come back out here to see this. What can you say? It's scary. It all began with a routine police investigation into the disappearance of Shannon Gilbert, a young woman from New Jersey. Yeah, there's somebody after me. I'm sorry? There's somebody after me. Where are you? There's somebody after me. Where are you, ma'am? I don't know. Are you driving right now? No, I'm inside the house. I'm sorry? I'm inside the house. What house? I don't know. Can you trace where I am? I'm sorry? Can you trace where I am? No, I can't. What's your callback number you're calling from? Huh? What phone number are you calling from? What are you going to do? What are you going to do to me? 
However, what the authorities stumbled upon was far more sinister. On December 11, 2010, while searching for Shannon, police made a gruesome discovery, a set of human remains along Ocean Parkway. We found human remains, three human remains so far in the area between Oak Beach and Gilgo Beach. When I heard today three more, it really, really scared me because I just want somebody to find out who's doing this and end it all. In the months that followed, the bodies of more victims began to surface each one adding another layer of complexity to the case. We unearthed the remains of young women, many of whom were online escorts, all bearing the hallmark of a cold and calculated killer. I convinced myself it wasn't after a week, you know, we didn't hear back from the DNA. I just said, it's not her. They would have called us if it was her. It's sad. And I just wanted to get a chance to see where my sister was. It took my sister's life from me and my families. I just can't believe it. The discovery of multiple bodies along the same stretch of beach hinted at the work of a serial predator lurking in Long Island's shadows. If there are any more bodies out there, uh, we want to find them. Shannon's mother was deeply distraught and reached out to law enforcement to inquire about any potential leads discovered in the past week. My daughter is still missing. We don't know where she is. It's connected and I wish they would just do their job faster <laughs> before any more girls get hurt. Law enforcement officers across the region joined forces in a relentless pursuit of justice. Yet, despite exhaustive efforts and countless leads, the elusive killer's identity remained elusive. As theories swirled around the enigmatic figure behind the murders, the case captivated the nation. Uh, we do know that um, the cluster of probably connected homicides is much larger than has commonly been reported. Uh, there were about uh, 10 or so bodies of women recovered at Gilgo Beach in 2010 and 2013. Um, we believe that the, um, that the connected homicides on Long Island are actually much larger. Uh, that uh, if you go to our website at murderdata.org and you set the switches uh, to look at New York murders and then to look at murders in Nassau and Suffolk County, Long Island, and then you look at female murders, um, you'll see um, a much larger cluster of homicides that look just like Gilgo Beach, statistically. And we believe that this cluster has a very low clearance rate, that these are overwhelmingly unsolved murders. A year after the first victim was found, Shannon Gilbert's body was finally the investigation for the killer was a search for a serial killer. But that investigation was delayed and obstructed by corrupt Sheen in the police force by the chief himself, who had his own legal issues connected to escort. Then in 2023, a new task force was put together and the case solved within months. However, a guy named John Betrolf, arrested in 2014 after his DNA linked him to two 1990s murders, was convicted in 2017 and sentenced to consecutive 25-year terms. Prosecutors suggested Betrolf might be connected to the Gilgo Beach murders, but Suffolk County Police did not comment and Betrolf's attorney denied the claims. It's been over 10 years and there have been no arrests. And probably the most incredible aspect of this is the fact that a prime suspect in many people's minds is our former police chief, James Burke. The FBI says that there are probably within 20, between 25 and 50 serial killers active in the country, this country at any given time. But I can assure you that ours is the only one in this area or anywhere where, the, where a prime suspect was the police chief. If you don't believe me, this is the Wikipedia page for the Long Island serial killer case. 
it mentions James Burke as a suspect, the suspect, the first suspect, and it's not because they're in alphabetical order. And they list others, obviously. Over the years, the investigation into the Gilgo Beach murders saw its share of breakthroughs and setbacks. When that's done, one of the first things that James Burke does, the new police chief here in Suffolk County, is tells the FBI, who had been helping out with identifying bodies and doing work on this case, the, the bodies of some of these victims had been found in the preceding year, told the FBI, we don't want your help. An absolute insane idea. From technological advancements in forensic science to dead ends and false leads, the journey to unraveling the mystery was fraught with challenges. Unbelievably, in the most recent episode of the podcast, Unraveled podcast, Ballone said that he had come to understand that James Burke, his police chief, was a sociopath. Steve Ballone, our county executive, said he realized that his police chief was a sociopath and he still did not fire him. He gave some gobbledygook answer about, and when asked why, by Billy Jensen, why you didn't fire him, he said um, the, the FBI was investigating Burke and he didn't want to get in the way of that, of that investigation. Evidently, Steve Ballone believes that when someone leaves their job, the FBI just stops investigating them. I believe by Steve Ballone keeping James Burke as chief, it actually hurt that investigation because the detectives who would, could have turned and, and testified against, Ballone, uh, against Burke were, were afraid to do so, but if he was no longer their boss, he would have been perfect, they would have been perfectly willing to do so. Despite the tireless dedication of investigators, the case seemed destined to remain unsolved until a pivotal moment changed everything. The investigators had their suspect and they kept an eye on Rex without letting him know. It was time when the police had evidence against him and they finally arrested. Twice he has been um, laying just on his bunk, uh, sleeping. Uh, once he was looking up uh, at, you know, just looking up at the ceiling. Uh, very quiet, uh, didn't have much to say. They chose not to engage with him. I do not know the reasons why they chose not to. Uh, not only were those, uh, was he looking at uh, in investigative insight, uh, he was looking, trying to figure out how is the task force using cell phones to try to figure out what's happening? What are the developments with regard to the task force? And this, uh, this really um, um, supported our decision to keep our investigative um, focus secret because we knew that this one person would be watching and we didn't want to give him uh, any insight into what we were doing. And we also didn't want him to know just how close we were getting. We've been here for about 30 years and, and the guy's been quiet, never really bothers anybody. Um, you were kind of shocked, to tell you the truth, you know? Do you know him? Yeah, his name is Rex. Um, he's got a, a, a wife and, and uh, two kids. The guy pretty much keeps himself. We just say hello to each other and, and that's, that's about it. You know, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, we're shocked because this is a very, very quiet neighborhood. Everybody knows each other, all, you know, all of our neighbors are, you know, we're all friendly and there's never been a problem at all. Not a, not a, a scream, a yell, nothing. It's crazy, it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, quiet mass people park. <laughs> Shocking. Sad, <laughs> really, I mean, you think of the, the victims, it's sad, it's tragic. It's not about him, it's not about us, it's about the victims. Fresh eyes on his case, and the resiliency of our investigators allowed us to identify Rex Hureman. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Hureman is a demon that walks among us, a predator that ruined families. And if not for the members of this task force, he would still be on the streets today. However, even with this arrest, we're not done. There's more work to do in this investigation regarding the other victims of the Gilgo Beach bodies that were discovered. The revelation sent shockwaves through the community as friends, neighbors, and colleagues grappled with the unthinkable truth. In the meantime, his co-workers began to speak. 
would have one of them uh, clean the toilet if he thought the cleaning person hadn't done a good enough job. A woman in the office? Yes. He more than once commented on women's bodies. If someone perhaps had gained some weight, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing. Shortly after his arrest, actor William Baldwin responded with a Twitter post. Speaking to NBC News, Baldwin revealed that he and Heuermann were classmates and 1981 graduates of Burner High School. He expressed surprise at the connection and described Heuermann as a mind-boggling student. I never thought he would be that kind of person. It's shocking. People were saying, oh my God, I can't believe we have a serial killer in our town and we grew up with and we walked amongst the killer. Born and raised on Long Island. Okay. Been right. working in Manhattan since 1987. There's nothing in my interview that made me think that this person in front of me uh, is a dangerous person. According to Antoine, Rex didn't seem like a dangerous person. He also stated that Rex is a smart person. Really what stood out is his, uh, his attention to details. He was very knowledgeable, very detail-oriented. I still remember uh, his handshake when we met. Very strong. Wow. A very strong handshake. It was like you, you were shaking like a very thick piece of marble. That's how strong his hand was. Heuermann's double life remained hidden from those closest to him, but investigators discovered a web of deception he had woven. Followed his use of burner phones. We were able to uh, identify seven separate burner phones that he used. We were able to use fictitious uh, or fraudulent email addresses and get Google warrants. And from there, we got his searches. Uh, and we learned uh, what... We, what uh, the individual, what the defendant was searching. Uh, in a 14 month period, he had over 200 searches pertaining to uh, the Gilgo investigation. Once we were able to t attach the avalanche inside of that Massapequa box, which then attached to Rex Heuermann, that was a moment where we said, okay, there's something here. Heuermann's arrest hinged on crucial forensic evidence that connected him to the crimes. DNA analysis of materials gathered from the crime scenes established a compelling link between Heuermann and the victims. So cell data, here's something to consider. Cell data, no matter what you do, you can't cover it. The records are the records. You can cover a crime scene with bleach, you can cover up all kinds of physical traces, but cell data records, the user has no way to easily access them or get rid of them. And I don't think a lot of people consider it. So as technology advances, we can dive in even deeper into this evidence. Cell phone records further corroborated his presence near Gilgo Beach at the time of the murders. So there are a few mistakes. The first one that I would say I have experience with creating test data all the time. And we create test data to educate people. So when I create test data, I have a burner phone. I create a fake email address. But then I am typically stopped when it comes to financial information because prepaid credit cards are not accepted by many things that you need. And I think the financial information that links back to him, whether he had five fake email accounts or 10, it all links back to the financial. So that is what I think is the greatest mistake. I think the vanity comes out with the taunting by using a phone and trying to be two people at the same time. You can't do that. But above all, Rex pleaded not guilty. He's doing the best he can. You have to remember, he's not with the general population. He's isolated in one jail cell. His, he has no interaction with any other inmates. Uh, I see him a a as recently as, or as frequently as once a week. Uh, he wants to get to a trial. He maintained from the beginning of this case and still maintains today, he is not the guy. Prosecutors meticulously built their case piecing together the intricate puzzle of evidence that would ultimately seal Heuermann's fate. However, the victim's family expressed their feelings in front of the court. Maureen was a mother of two amazing children, and they will forever be without their mother. There are countless times I needed her, and she was not there. I remember she read to me every night, and now I can no longer remember the sound of her voice. As the legal proceedings against Heuermann unfolded, the quest for justice entered a new chapter. There should be no mistake, the work of the grand jury is continuing. We're going to let that investigation play out. He's dealing with it on a day-by-day -day basis, one day at a time. 
but he is looking forward to having his day in the courtroom. Later, one of Rex's victims, who escaped her death, spoke up in front of the media. So uh, he asked me if I thought Shannon Gilbert, that Jersey City girl, was connected. I said, yeah. And he said, yeah, I do too. Uh, and then another thing he said was, how do you think they get rid of the bodies without going notice? And I said, I don't know. I've never been to the area, ever. I don't know the access points. I don't know anything about it. And he said, well, it's very dark and desolate. And then he goes, you know, what if they treaded through the marsh? And I don't know if he meant in one of those big rubber suits walking through it with camouflage bags, or if he meant he took a small boat with no light, or what he meant by that. But that was one hypothetical. And the other ga he gave was, well, a cop could easily do it without anyone bothering him. Turn his lights on, park, put a cone up. No one's gonna bother him. So I tried to be polite. I actually stayed through the whole thing. And I remember him saying, it's up to 10 victims now, right? Um, and I said, I think so. I wish I could describe it. Like, I wish there was a word for it. But he seemed like somebody who was reliving it and enjoying it, like almost like, almost like mentally orgasmic. Like, like later on, he was gonna get to reveal the truth to me that all along it was him.